Well, hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to work on some holders for my pipe clamps and some of my C clamps uh, that I have on a, a clamp rack that I made uh, several years ago. Um, clamp rack's getting pretty heavy and it's kind of hard to move around and I like to uh, use some of this wall space I have in the shop to go and put up my clamps. Um, the interesting part and the challenging part that I think every woodworker has is I've got a whole compilation of different clamps in my workshop. Um, they go on from many years of buying ones that were on sale like uh, Jorgensen or Pony clamps, uh, some off-brand name clamps. Uh, when my father passed away and uh, he did woodworking and craft work and in the basement, I uh, bought all the clamps for my mom when he passed away. So I have a multitude of different clamps that he has. And so trying to come up with something that fits all of the clamp styles is just impossible to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start creating some different clamp holders for wall mount uh, that I kind of, uh, kind of thought of. Uh, some of it is some different uh, clamp racks that I saw uh, from other woodworkers on the internet, but um, it'll be kind of a compilation. And I'm gonna try to utilize a space in my shop that is not gonna be used uh, or that the clamps would not be in the way. Uh, as you know, if you have a wood shop and if you don't, you're getting ready to put a wood shop together, uh, wall space is pretty much at a premium. Um, to be able to put cabinets uh, and clamps or jigs or hang up stuff. So I'm trying to be pretty effective and efficient at all the little uh, nooks and crannies on my walls on my shop uh, that I can kind of hide clamps in those locations. So if we really take a look at, you know, one of the clamp styles that I really like the best uh, and it's, uh, I get it from Rockler and it is a, a three quarter inch pipe clamp. And the three quarter inch pipe clamp is very much like the Jorgensen or the Pony Pipe clamp. Um, really, not much of a difference except one design that I really like about it, and that design is the uh, the tail. Um, there's two reasons. Number one, this clamp style, when you set it onto a bench, it really has a, a really good uh, stable uh, appearance and function. Um, it sits up uh, approximately an inch and a half to two inches off the, off the work surface and so it allows you to be able to clamp up your wood and be able to get up underneath and clean any kind of glue, clean, a glue squeeze out. It also um, has a lip uh, on that foot that it sits on. Um, I'm not sure you see it. I'll get a close up here shortly. Uh, but it has a one quarter inch of a lip. And that's perfect to make a very simplistic a clamp rack for the wall. And I'll show you what I, I, plan, on, I plan on doing. Okay, so this is a drawing, uh, rough drawing I put together just so you could understand what I'm doing. So I'm taking uh, two um, pieces of uh, scrap plywood that I have in the shop from another project. And I'm going to rip the pieces, um, the back piece to three inches and the front piece to three and a quarter, uh, showing that quarter inch gap on top. And what that's going to do is that pipe clamp uh, that I showed you from Rockler, that clamp, that, that quarter inch lip will sit up inside of that little notch. <clears throat> so when I hang, uh, when I uh, screw these boards together, okay, I'll end up gluing them and screwing them together, and then I'll actually take this whole unit and screw it onto the wall. Uh, and it'll be very close to the wall. It'll be uh, pretty uh, snug up against the wall so it won't be hanging out to where I could uh, hit it with uh, a piece of equipment. Uh, so it won't be cantilevered, and which puts more stress uh, on that piece that would be mounted onto the wall. So let's go ahead and get started uh, getting these scrap pieces of plywood and uh, getting them ripped down to three and a quarter and three inches.
My first cut's going to be at the three and a quarter uh, because uh, several of these pieces are uh, already at a little over three quarter of an inch, a three and a quarter inch piece. So I'm just going to clean it up to get it right to that perfect size. Okay, we got the boards uh, cut to length um, for the width as well as for the length. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, do a glue up. We're going to use a pin nailer to just tack it in place to hold it while I go ahead and put the clamps on.
down. And one more to go. Okay, the glue is dried on the, uh, these clamp racks or the uh, clamp holder. So let's go ahead and remove the clamps and uh, we'll go ahead and sand them down, uh, get them uh, measured up and uh, drill the holes for where the uh, studs are on the wall. We'll go ahead and get them installed. Now I have both boards all sanded down. I use 220 grit sandpaper. I marked, I took a measurements off my wall where I want to mount these so that I get the right placement where the 2x6s are so that it's actually screwed into the strongest part of the wall. I took those measurements and uh, put them out onto the two boards, uh, went and drilled and did a small countersink and uh, I think we're ready to go ahead and get these installed onto the wall. Okay, so I, um, I took my straight edge and, and made sure that I was pretty well flush to the trim of my window and I took a look at the distance that I wanted to have for these to hang on to the wall. It gives me enough room to be able to set it inside and still be able to um, have a little bit of room on the bottom so they're not hitting the ground. So I've got the right distance of where I want to uh, place them. Now all I got to do is go ahead and take a level and level out the board. Looks good there. I'm using uh, number eight three inch screws so that it's able to go through the two pieces of plywood plus the half inch tongue groove pine board I have on the wall and be able to get into the two by six. And we just screw them in. All right. And I think that's going to do it. Now we're going to go ahead and do the uh, 55 inch piece, which is going to hold my five inch bar clamps using the same um, design as I did for my two inch bar clamps. We went and uh, got a first screw in on the height that I wanted. Let's go ahead and get a few more screws. I'd like to go ahead and at least get them started. And we'll go ahead and level it up. And there you have it. Okay, that's good, that's on there nice and tight, it's level, and we'll take our clamp and hang them up the same way. I have several pony clamps as well, they're the pony three quarter inch pipe clamps, and I want to make a rack for that as well. So uh, the distance or the, the width of the rack is going to be 42 inches for the area of the wall that I'm going to apply this to. And uh, I'm going to make the board five inches tall. That gives me enough room to rest the clamp on top of it. And then I'm going to use uh, some three quarter inch pipe clamps. They're like spring clamps. Um, they're, they're great to be able to uh, attach the pipe to, not necessarily to hold the weight, but to hold it in place 
Um, the actual three quarter inch plywood is going to hold the weight of the clamp, but that uh, spring clamp is going to actually hold it in place so that it doesn't move in accidentally. If one of my dogs <laughs> come across it, it, I don't have 20 pipe clamps coming down on me. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get this started and let's get this plywood ripped. cut to 42 inches long. And we'll go ahead and proceed to sand the, uh, the plywood with a 220 grit sandpaper. Well, I have the board done. It's all cut to size and sanded. Uh, I went and drilled six different holes in this board and um, being that this is going to hold a lot of pipes on this, uh, on this rack, I want to make sure that I've got it good and secured to the, uh, to the wall. So uh, ready to go ahead and uh, get it set and get it leveled on the wall. Let's go ahead and screw it in. Okay, so we, uh, we have one end screwed in and it's easier to do that so I can get the level on it. And let's go ahead and screw in the rest of the screws. One of the things I'm doing is um, using um, a couple of washers um, on the head of, uh, actually on all the screws that I'm using to go into the wall. Uh, what that does, it gives me uh, a little more torque or a little more uh, holding power uh, when it goes into the plywood instead of, as you all know, when you try to use a screw like that, uh, this is a um, square drive square drive woodworking screw, it'll actually go and rip right through the plywood. So those washers help to kind of pull it in and hold it in place. Okay, let's make sure she's level. Okay, looks good there. I'll tighten this one up. Looks good. Now let's go ahead and do the rest of the screws. two more to go. Okay, so I've got, the, I've got the bar up now, so let's go ahead and put on those spring clamps. Here you'll see I've put a couple of those spring clamps on and got the distance that I need between each pipe to give that clamp, that spring clamp, enough room to expand when a clamp is in it. Um, if you butt them up to each other, that won't work because then they'll restrict each other as you get more pipes into the clamps. So I went and marked out, it's about a little over an inch and three quarters. I marked out an inch and three quarter mark um, on that board. And we'll go ahead and start putting these spring clamps on. And just to give you an idea, again, I showed you the package earlier in the video, uh, but these are what they look like. Um, you basically just got one hole in the middle to uh, screw it in. And one thing I did is these, um, Springs are actually, these two little tongs are really close to each other. 
So when you try to put a three quarter inch pipe inside of that, it, it would not hold. So I used a pair of pliers, went inside and crimped it, crimped it. And being that it is made from spring steel, it does have some rebound to it, but it, it, it makes it enough that when you put the, clamp, the pipe clamp into it, man, it holds it on tight. So uh, that's just a tip if you get those. Um, I got those at amazon.com. Um, uh, it's, you're gonna have to probably do the same thing because they're made for a range of pipes up to three quarter inch. So let's go ahead and start getting the rest of these put on. I uh, ran out of the spring clamps. Uh, I'll have to get some more. Uh, I'll probably do it at the same time that I order half inch spring clamps because I have, oh, about 20 different half inch uh, pipe clamps that I got from my dad when he passed away. And um, I want to be able to use the same type of system, be able to hang it onto the board and then use a pipe clamp to secure it so it doesn't fall down. So let's go ahead and let's get some pipes ho uh, hooked up. So we've got the all the pipes that I have. These are all my three quarter inch pipes. I might have a couple more here over in the corner, but you can kind of see how it sits. And you can see here, I moved it so that I could still get to my 110 outlet. Uh, not a big deal if I have a bunch of um, bunch more uh, clamps in here. Um, I can always get to that uh, outlet by removing a couple clamps. I'm not too concerned about that. But you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like and how they're holding on. And I think it turned out pretty good. Now that I put up some more of the spring uh, loaded clamps, uh, I also realized I was going to go ahead and purchase the uh, half inch pipe clamps, the spring loaded clips. Um, uh, and I realized I really don't have to. I thought, well, I had these half inch pipes, and I thought I'd uh, put them into the rack and see how they did. And I tell you what, that three quarter inch uh, clip um, actually works pretty good for these as well. So I think I'm going to end up using the same style and the same clips. Um, I'll have to get some more um, online, but uh, they work pretty good for my half inch pipe clamps, uh, as you can as you can see. So I think that's going to be a good solution to go ahead and, and use for my half inch pipe clamps as well. So the next part in this video for taking care of hanging up all my clamps are um, all the other uh, Jorgensen type of clamps um, that I've got. I've got a, a pretty good um, gallery here of the clamps that I've bought uh, many years ago. Some again that I uh, got from my dad's shop when he passed away and then some of the newer uh, clamps uh, that Jorgensen's making, uh, actually an improvement to the existing clamp style that they have. So what I did is I went and kind of organized them by size so that I knew exactly how many of these uh, clamp racks I'm gonna have to make. And uh, I kind of figured it up and um, I know exactly what I'm gonna have to do here to, uh, to get these, uh, these clamps um, 
uh, get the rack designed and get these clamps put up. So let's go over what that plan is. So what I'm figuring here is uh, making a, um, a shelf type of clamp rack um, for these uh, Jorgensen style, uh, what I call bar clamps. Uh, they have the uh, medium duty, uh, which is what I'm holding here. Um, those medium duties are uh, the 3712s made by Jorgensen. Um, and this is the new style handle that they're coming out with now, which is a fantastic upgrade. It's a, a rubber grip. You, you can really get a good, good handle on it versus the wooden ones that they have. And uh, then uh, I've got what they call the heavier duty uh, Jorgensen 3712s. Um, and uh, I'm going to make a, a rack for those as well. The sizes will be a little bit different, and I'll cover that here in my... Uh, my cut list if you will. So I just took some scrap pieces of wood so you can kind of see it. So here's the prototype. I just kind of took some scrap pieces of wood so I can so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, the base that will get, actually get uh, drilled into the wall or secured to the wall that will be three and a quarter inches. Uh, the top shelf of this clamp rack uh, that will end up being five inches deep and then I'll have some support blocks that will go on the ends and probably one in the middle. So, uh, and that's how it'll get put together and mounted onto the wall. Um, the uh, sheet of paper, uh, which is my, uh, kind of my cut list, uh, is going to be for the medium duty. I'm going to cut two of the, uh, at five inches by 46 inches, two pieces of plywood at three and a quarter by 46. And then I'm going to do one more at uh, five inches, uh, at 38 inches, and another one at three and a quarter inches at 38 inches. And that's uh, again to fit my wall where I want to put these, uh, put this uh, racking. So uh, the uh, on that drawing you'll see a bunch of little notches. Uh, and what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to actually cut into um, this shelf the uh, distance of that bar clamp, uh, this rod, so that when it goes in to um, the shelf, it'll actually have a slot to sit inside of so that the, these things don't move all over the place like that. Okay? So, first thing we have to do now is to go ahead and start uh, getting the plywood and, um, and start cutting it up, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Okay, that gives us the uh, 
the three five inch pieces and the uh, three uh, three and a quarter inch pieces. So let's go ahead and on the heavy duty uh, clamps that I have, um, they're a little bit longer, so I'm going to make them a six inch shelf instead of a five inch shelf. So let's go ahead and cut the six inch out of a sheet of plywood that I have here. Okay, now we're going to make those uh, cuts to uh, 46 inches and 38. So we'll cut two of the five inches to 46, two of the three and a quarter at 46, and then one five inch at 38, and one three and a quarter at, at 38. We have the boards ready to go, so what I did is I, I marked uh, a line here which is half the distance or half the thickness of the plywood. I'm going to drill some holes in this uh, randomly roughly about every six inches and we'll use that when we go and assemble this shelf together. So let's get started. So let's start and describe what we're doing here in order to make the slots for the clamps themselves to be able to, to uh, be stable on this clamp rack. So I did some measuring and determined that um, I needed like a one inch distance. So if I, if I made a groove here and made a groove here, I could put a, a, a clamp here and a clamp here and I uh, would have more than enough distance between the two to be able to pull them on and off the rack without having them bump into each other and have any uh, uh, clamps fall off the rack that I don't want to fall off. So what I did, I made measurements and marks uh, of one inches all the way down um, the first board and then I used double sided tape and taped on my second board and then also my shorter board um, as you can see right there. I just have clamps kind of holding it together um, uh, as I go through the uh, milling process to create these slots. Now what I did on the slots is I went and changed out my saw blade to uh, my uh, stack dado head cutter and I measured the slot that I needed. I needed a quarter of an inch and maybe just a, a hair more, maybe a sixty-fourth more so a quarter inch on my dado stack set is the end plate, the two end plates. And then I put a shim in between the two in order to give me that quarter inch plus a 64th. And uh, I went and measured the height. I wanted to come up about uh, three quarters of an inch, which is the, the width of the bar on those bar clamps. And then I went and put a sacrificial fence um, onto um, my uh, right angle gauge here and I made a center mark uh, right on the gauge where that groove that my stack dado head cutter is going to make uh, will actually happen. So I could go to another extreme, make another groove here, and then put a quarter inch key, and then just you know do it like you would do like a box dado set. But for this process, um, being just clamp racks for the shop, that doesn't have to be exactly precise. I've got enough room to wiggle here uh, between the clamps. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to basically line up this line with the lines I showed you on the uh, on the stack and uh, turn it on and I've got several cuts to be made. So let's go ahead and get started.
<clears throat> okay, what I'm going to do here, <clears throat> this other piece, um, the shorter piece, uh, I don't want to put a groove in here because this is where the support block's going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, off the uh, off this block and go ahead and continue to finish up the balance on the larger pieces. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Our next part of this project is to make these blocks. These are going to be the support blocks for the ends, um, like that. And then we'll probably end up putting one in the center here as well. Um, and of course on the end. So in order to get ready to do that, I changed out from the stack dado head cutter. And I measured the size that we need. Uh, and we need a four and a quarter. Uh, by three and a quarter is the size. I'm going to need a total of nine of them. So I went over to my pile of scrap wood. I found a bunch. I think I have enough to make nine. And we're going to go ahead and, and uh, let's get these cut. my fence to three and a quarter and we're going to go ahead and make those cuts. Okay, next I want to uh, take those blocks that we're using for supports and I want to uh, round them off. I made a, uh, a little bit of a hand, I'm not sure that's going to focus there, but I made a curve here for the corner and I'm going to go ahead and take it off at my sander. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, Craig jig to go and make the uh, necessary pocket holes for the braces uh, that I had uh, cut out and then round cornered on my sander um, and then also the back brace that will get attached. I'm going to use a few pocket hole screws to go ahead and attach that as well. Uh, it'll make it a little more secure and it'll be easier to assemble by uh, using a, a pocket hole jig. So let's get started.
Now we're ready to go ahead and make the assembly. I've got the uh, shelf for the clamps. I've got the back that we're going to put on top and I've got the side braces. So let's go ahead and start getting them put, it, uh, put together. We use a little bit of wood glue just to uh, ensure it's bond. Although pocket holes is probably good enough, uh, I have a tendency to um, over strengthen the things that I build. Now I've got some additional screws that I'll put up on top just to really make sure it's nice and secure. Probably again overkill, but um, as you can see, you know, we've got the, the base for the teeth. Um, that's where all the clamps, um, the uh, bar clamps are going to go. And I'll be able to take this and, and bring it up to the wall and go ahead and mount it onto the shop wall. So I've got another one to make. Let's go ahead and get that one made. And then we'll uh, go ahead and uh, put it up onto the wall and get the racks, uh, get the clamps put in. Okay, we are done making the racks uh, for now, I would say. Um, I've got a multitude of different clamps that I still need to make a few specialty racks. But I think for now, the majority of the ones I use all the time, um, this is going to work perfect. So just as an overview, the first clamp rack we kind of put up together here uh, again as I said these are for those rockler type of of, of uh, bar clamps the three quarter inch bar clamps um, kind of has that uh, lip or the channel inside here it's perfect so it's not going to fall off I've got that, that attached to the wall and I've got the longer versions and then over here I've got those small ones that are that's a perfect place to put uh, right at uh, right below the window kind of wasted space and then the, the uh, bar racks that I made bar, or for the uh, bar clamps, um, that just works perfect. They go inside, they sit on top, the little notch there um, kind of keeps it from rocking out, rocking back and forth. That worked out pretty good. And I've got some other larger heavy-duty clamps, uh, Jorgensen's, and the thickness of the uh, bar, of this bar is actually too thick to fit into these slots that I made because I made them for the medium-duty clamps. But for now, until I can make a, a a rack for that, I've got open space on this rack, and it just worked perfectly. I just put them up inside, close the uh, the jaw and it sits up there nice and secure. So I got those all set up. Then the uh, Pony or the Jorgensen pipe clamps. Again, they're sitting on top of the uh, piece of plywood that I use for the, for the clamp or for the uh, rack. And then I use those pipe clamps as I showed you, those uh, spring-loaded clamps. I got those actually from off of Amazon. And uh, I have a bunch of half-inch uh, clamps that fit in the same position perfectly. So um, um, my three-quarter inch is already all full. That's as many three-quarter inches I have. 
and I've got a multitude of the half inch uh, that I got from my dad's shop and they fit perfectly into that position. And then up above the same type of uh, bar clamp um, I've got different lengths and again some of the heavy duty ones again they're not sitting inside the, the those channels they're basically just clamped on which is perfect and I got some of those other uh, really quick Irwin quick clamps um, I just got I think about six of them one two three four five of them uh, just kind of put them up there as well so uh, this project uh, turned out uh, fairly good it really kind of relieved me of my uh, clamp rack that I've been using for uh, a while probably for about 10 years that I made um, but I still got a, a few more specialties to take care of and uh, when I do that I'll make another video okay that's the uh, video for now again we took care of some uh, clamping issues of having clamps stacked up onto the that old rack that I had finally got them onto the wall and that's going to make it a lot easier to be able to work around the shop. So uh, if you like the video, again, it's just a quick a homemade clamp, uh, clamping rack systems, uh, you can go ahead and hit like uh, on the uh, video. Uh, and I would ask you, if you would, go ahead and just subscribe to my channel. I've got several projects that we're working on right now to complete this shop. Uh, the next project that I'm going to be working on are going to be the cabinetry for the walls that's going to be sitting right up above my chop saw and radial arm saw. Then we'll make the base cabinets for the radial arm and the chop saw. And then we'll continue on with additional cabinetry and countertops uh, in the shop along the walls for all of my hardware. Um, and uh, then we'll make another large assembly table. So again, uh, please subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to get an automatic update of the new videos that come on board. I hope this helps you to see exactly what other people do for uh, woodworking and uh, how they put their shops together and the different styles they have. There is no perfect method to do it. Everybody has a different way and this is basically uh, my way. So again, thanks so much for watching the video and we'll see you around the block.